Down on the street, Nissan Sunny GTIR. Everything about this Nissan Sunny GTI-R is insane, and I'm not referring to the specifications alone. I covered this GTI-R a few years ago on my site with a couple of photos, but back then I was ignorant of its importance. This year, during late summer, my father was hospitalized, and after he returned home, I visited him every other day. And as it was summer, I did visit him often by bike, and then I would pass this GTIR somewhere along the way and I decided to collect some footage. The history of the Nissan Sunny GTIR is simple homologation. In 1990, the Nissan GTIR entered the Japanese market to homologate the car for usage in the Group A rally class. The Group A class allows usage of cars that have been derived from road-going cars and homologated through a minimum number of homologation cars to be built out of the entire range of the same model. In 1990, the minimum number to build and sell was 5000, and thus Nissan had to produce 5000 of the GTIR in the first year, of which 500 homologated for rally usage. The GTIR was sold in Japan, the UK, the Netherlands, Germany, France, Iceland and Italy between 1990 and 1994 and at the end of the production the total number produced was somewhere between 12,000 and 15,000. So now we know this car is one out of let's say 12,000 which makes it quite special. The GTIR's main features were the engine and drivetrain. The engine was a Nissan SR20 DET that had a stronger block marked as 54C and had an output of 230 horsepower in Japan and 220 outside Japan. The main reason for the loss of 10 horsepower outside Japan was a different fuel mapping as some countries had inferior octane ratings compared to Japan. The all-wheel drive advanced total traction engineering system at TESA in short was not entirely 100% all-wheel drive. With a limited slip differential at the rear and an open differential at the front, an efficient coupling between the transfer case and the drive shaft meant that under normal conditions, power would be sent to all wheels equally. But if a front tire loses traction, the power can be transferred by the transfer case to the rear diff, while if a tire would lose traction at the rear, it would actually send its power only to the other side. A simple and effective system. There was a drawback of this system. It added an additional 300 kg of weight to the package, setting scales to a total of 1220 kg. The combination of a relatively light car, a powerful turbocharged engine and an all-wheel drive system granted the GTIR phenomenal performance. Acceleration from 0 to 100 km per hour in 5 to 4 seconds. To put this into perspective, in 1990, an Italian company called Lamborghini launched a Kuntec replacement called the Diablo and it featured a 492 horsepower 5.7 liter V12 propelling this car in 4.5 seconds from 0 to 100 km per hour. Of course the GTIR is no match for the Diablo's top speed of 325 km per hour as it features a close ratio box meant for rally enthusiasts and ended its acceleration at 232 km per hour. Moog from Mighty Car Mods owned a white Nissan GTIR during the first season, and it could have been this car's twin brother. The GTIR was made immortal in their epic black episode and featured the very first intercooler heart in the intercooler episode. There are so many little details to be told about the insane GTIR, but let's talk about this GTIR that even goes beyond sanity. As I recently discovered, this GTIR has been registered with the so-called Dutch V-Registration. 
and it still does feature a V-blade. In the Netherlands, a tax arrangement was created that allowed companies to get a tax benefit if they bought cars that were used for running their business. Those cars are given either a B or V registration, and in the 80s and 90s, officially these cars were supposed to lack rear seats and have blind rear windows. On the Dutch license registration page, the information told me that this car has been registered officially as a Sunny 2.0 GTIR van. Wait a minute, someone was able to register a Nissan Sunny's GTIR as a van in 1993? I wonder how they pulled that off. Did they remove the rear bench and blinded the rear windows with some vinyl? Just imagine driving around in a 220 horsepower van in 1993. This car is a truly amazing car.